Throughout history, the Bible has sold over 5 billion copies worldwide, making it the best-selling book of all time, and it has been translated into over 3,000 languages, allowing its message to be accessible to people from diverse cultural and linguistic backgrounds, from the original Hebrew and Greek to modern languages and lesser-known dialects, the Bible has been brought to every corner of the globe, nurturing souls and strengthening the faith of millions of believers. The undeniable uniqueness of the Bible lies in its condition as an exceptional compilation of books. For some, the 66 books that make up the Bible are considered sacred scriptures, while for others, they are simply seen as fantastic stories or historical curiosities. From the Christian perspective, the Bible is considered the Word of God. Although it is recognized that various individuals were instruments in writing each part of the biblical canon, Christians see God as the ultimate author of the Bible. In their belief, God reveals himself and lays out his purposes for humanity through this sacred text. When analyzing the oldest books of the Bible, including Genesis and Exodus, scholars have seen the hand of various authors from the one who made the first version in the 9th century BC to the final edition attributed to Ezra in the 5th century BC. Regardless of religious affiliation, most agree that the Bible is a magnificent literary work, imposing in its scope. Those who read it ultimately ponder a transcendental question. Who were the original authors of the Bible, the most influential book of all time? The Bible, as we know it, was compiled for the first time in history in the 3rd century BC, when 70 Jewish scholars were invited by King Ptolemy II to come to Alexandria to contribute to the famous library, the history of the people of Israel, what we now call the Old Testament. For months, they put into writing the memory of thousands of years of the people of Israel, from Adam to Moses, including historical, wisdom, and prophetic books. Their work was translated from ancient Aramaic and Hebrew into Greek, Thus was born the so-called Septuagint, or Alexandrian Bible, also Septuagint, on which the current Christian text is based. A Hebrew compilation of the history of the people of Israel called the Masoretic Text, tradition in Hebrew, was made in the 9th century AD. It is the Hebrew version that does not include the New Testament. The New Testament and the compilation of the Gospels that portrayed the life of Jesus had numerous sources and authors, the oldest New Testament papyrus is a fragment of John dating from the years 125 to 130 AD. But of those original documents of the Alexandrian Bible, like the texts of the pre-Socratic Greek philosophers, there is no physical trace. All of that vanished due to the looting and fires of the legendary library, but also due to its weak transmission support. Papyrus, vellum, and leather do not withstand the passage of time. The same fate befell the evangelical writings. But how did that knowledge survive? For years, thousands and thousands of copies have been made. However, this produced a hermeneutic doubt. The ancient texts were copied by battalions of scribes, often in monasteries, and suffered numerous affronts ranging from simple spelling mistakes or lack of attention by the scribe to doctrinal and voluntary correction state Roselyne dupont Rock and Philippe Mercier in the Manuscripts of the Bible. Since each copy always had some error of interpretation or transcription, Christian paleography has endeavored to compare copies with other copies to reconstruct a text as close as possible to the original. After what has been mentioned above, several questions arise. Was a good job done, or were there false or ambiguous passages? Were Christians worldwide relying on erroneous texts? When two Bedouin shepherds accidentally entered the caves of Qumran in 1947, located on the northwest shore of the Dead Sea, near present-day Israel and the West Bank, in search of a lost goat, they discovered ancient scrolls enclosed in jars. This sparked one of the most fascinating paleographic disputes in history. These scrolls contained excerpts or entire passages from the books of the Bible. They came to be known as the Dead Sea Scrolls, they dated from 150 BC to 70 AD. Soon, curious theories arose about their content. Some claimed that these texts turned the sacred texts upside down, which had been distorted over the centuries by Christian historiography. Others added that the church did not want to disclose their content because they contained many contradictions about Jesus. Some said it was the best testimony of the New Testament, 
and even that Jesus was part of the Essene community, the enigmatic sect that had written and stored these texts in jars. The texts found in the caves of Qumran on the shores of the Dead Sea are fragments from about 800 manuscripts that originally appeared in the form of scrolls. Many of these manuscripts are copies of copies, as in antiquity. Unfortunately, papyrus was the most popular form of transmitting knowledge. The downside is that papyrus deteriorates easily. But what did they contain then? In part, they are biblical texts from the Old Testament, and in part, they are non-biblical religious texts of various kinds, such as moral and legal rules. There are about 200 biblical manuscripts, among which there are 32 copies of the Book of Psalms, 28 copies of Deuteronomy, 21 copies of the Book of Isaiah, minimal citations with quotes from Exodus and Deuteronomy, strips that were placed in a case and carried on the arm or on the head. The Essene manuscripts allowed to complete some obscure passages of the Holy Scriptures, but they did not reveal anything truly fascinating, despite being one of the most important archaeological findings of the 20th century. The Exact Reconstruction When comparing the manuscripts from Qumran with modern versions of the Bible, many exegetes and paleographers breathed a sigh of relief upon finding that Christian historiography, after all, had worked with great accuracy. It had managed to compose fairly precise sacred writings. The Qumran manuscripts demonstrated that the work of Christian doxographers and paleographers had been serious and accurate for centuries, and that in Qumran there were only texts from the Old Testament. And although, more recently, Father Joseph O'Callaghan, an expert papyrologist, saw in some of these Qumran fragments small phrases from the New Testament, a deeper examination revealed that the life of Jesus was not recorded in the manuscripts. And who were these Essenes? As can be inferred from the text referring to the rule of the community, the Essenes were a Jewish group strongly structured with their own hierarchy and officials, whose members shared all their possessions, participated in communal meals, and were subject to very strict discipline with penalties and punishments for any transgression, as commented by Florentino Garcia Marquez in the review The Qumran Manuscripts. Why had they withdrawn to the desert imitating the prophet Isaiah? As can be inferred from another text found in Qumran, they called themselves the Sons of Light. They had withdrawn to purify themselves, and they expected to return to Jerusalem at the end of times, after having defeated the Sons of Darkness. The Dead Sea Scrolls have been public since 1991, when the archaeological authorities of Israel, who have controlled access to the documents since the Six-Day War in 1967, allowed free access to all the documents. Since that date, they have been gradually photographed and for a few years now they could be consulted on the internet in this format. But now, with Google, they can be consulted in a much more convenient way. Additionally, Google Maps provides the exact location of those manuscripts. The Life of Jesus Although it may seem incredible, gathering the parts of the New Testament was an even more arduous task for scholars. After the death of Jesus, in the first half of the first century, his miracles and works were passed from mouth to mouth until they spread throughout the Mediterranean. By the second half of the first century, there were dozens of versions, in Syriac, in Coptic, in Latin, in Classical Greek, in Armenian. Some coincided and others did not. The thing is, as time went on, the number of versions increased. The more famous Jesus became and the more Christianity spread throughout the world, the harder it was to find the reliable version of his life. In 370, a list was drawn up containing four credible Gospels, as well as epistles or letters of St. Paul, Acts of the Apostles, and the Revelation of St. John. At a council held in 397 AD, they were consecrated after comparing them with each other and discarding several versions. The Gospel of St. Matthew is the most direct, as Matthew was one of the disciples of Jesus, to whom a mission of apostleship to the world was entrusted. St. Mark and St. Luke did not know Jesus but heard about him through the accounts of St. Paul. They were his disciples. Lastly, there is the Gospel of St. John, the youngest of the disciples. This Gospel is different from the other three in its wording and style. Now, these Gospels could have been written by them, or by communities of faithful who collected these versions and compiled them between the first and third centuries. Then, those versions were copied hundreds of times until they were consecrated by councils. And where are the manuscripts? 
Today's scholars estimate that there are up to 150,000 ancient manuscripts at their disposal. But within that sea of manuscripts, it has been determined which ones are the most reliable. These manuscripts are now found in the Vatican, in St. Petersburg, in Paris, in Cambridge. Some of them are only small fragments that have had to be supplemented with later versions. The oldest and most complete manuscript of the New Testament is the Codex Sinaiticus, preserved in the British Library in London. It is written in Greek uncile script, a type of uppercase letter, and dates from the 4th century AD. But if we talk about loose fragments, the oldest one dates from 125, 130 AD. It is called the Rylands Papyrus and comes from the Gospel of St. John. It is written on both sides and is preserved in the Rylands Library in Manchester. Every year, new fragments of the New or Old Testament appear, and then a fight ensues to determine whether it is a faithful copy or a poorly worked version. The last text appeared in 2012 and caused a small stir in March 2014 when it was deemed authentic by the Harvard Theological Review. It is a small passage from the New Testament dated between the years 6 and 9 AD, which exposes this phrase. Jesus said to them, My wife. Its authenticity is still doubted. In this journey through the origin of the Bible, from the compilation in Alexandria to the Dead Sea Scrolls, we discover the complex journey of a text that has shaped history. The precision of Christian historiography, confirmed by the Essene manuscripts, contrasts with the challenges in compiling the New Testament, where the multiplicity of versions generated debates and councils. At the intersection of faith and history, the Bible persists as a fascinating testimony of the human condition, challenging scholars to discern among thousands of manuscripts to unravel its authentic narrative. If you like the content, I invite you to subscribe to our channel so you don't miss future videos on interesting topics like this one. Also, don't forget to leave a like if you enjoyed the video. That really helps us a lot to keep growing and creating content that interests you. And of course, I would love to hear your opinion in the comments. What did you think of this journey through the origin of the Bible? Do you have any questions or comments you'd like to share? Leave them down below and let's continue the conversation. See you in the next video and thank you for being part of our community. Goodbye.